in the service together. Um, Ann Perone, uh, Jody, Poor, and, um, and Gabe. Um, Ann is our um, host for the, uh, for the service and our thanks um, for her doing that. Uh, takes a lot of time each week for the three of them to prepare for what we do on Sunday morning. If you are a guest or a first time uh, person worshiping with us uh, on, on Zoom, welcome. Um, if you would like any information about the church or want to know more about the church, uh, feel welcome to email or call the church office and one of us will uh, be available um, to answer any questions you have or concerns you would like to share. We thank Dolores um, Broberg for being our liturgist this morning. Um, and we welcome Lynn Peterson to offer our gathered prayer. What a, what a gift. Uh, Barbara Mitchell has an announcement she wants to make. Good morning. Can I be heard? Yes. Uh, I bring a report to, from the global mission team. Uh, COVID-19 has shut down several missions worldwide. The Congo has had trouble fundraising for the program called Congo Partnership for Child Hunger. And this has turned around much of its success in fighting hunger and malnutrition in the Congo. There are three members from FUMCOG on the global mission team. That's Ruth Thornton, Annette Onema Orbach, and myself, Barbara. Annette's family is from the Congo. Now, Reverend Bob has agreed that the communion collection on this, this coming worldwide communion Sunday on October 4th will be donated to this mission, the Congo Partnership for Child Hunger. And now this is the day, October 4th, that we usually have international linger lunch. <laughs> so in 2020, we'll have international linger lunch, sort of as we think about feeding others instead of ourselves. It costs 56 cents to feed a child one meal, $100, feeds 179 children one meal each. The meal is a nutritious porridge that is filling and contains supplements that fight malnutrition. Think in terms of how many meals you, you can provide. We hope you'll donate generously for the communion's offering to help the Congo children overcome hunger and malnutrition and grow and prosper as all children should. Write your check out to FUMCOG and on the line write Congo Partnership and if more fits, Congo Partnership for Childhood Hunger. And this is my check. <laughs> and you can see I've written on the line. Send the uh, check to the FUMCOG office and thank you all. We will post this again on Hot Topics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that work and witness. Uh, there'll be a meeting of the uh, conversations on race group after the worship service um, this afternoon. Um, next week, we will continue our wilderness journey uh, that we're going to start today with Gabe's sermon, and I will be preaching. Um, Carol, Carol Hurl has brought us Adult Academy planners together and we thank her for the program. We thank she and Bill Ewing for the program this morning. Um, next week, um, the it'll be led by, by um, Gabe, whose idea was to have the Images of God uh, sermon series this summer and some of the, uh, the those, those presenters over the summer who are available will be with us uh, next next Sunday for the Adult Academy along with Gabe and talking about that experience. A uh, reminder that you have, um, that if you have not already, 
to apply for the mail-in ballot to vote after that wonderful program this morning. And please notice in the uh, bulletin that was sent out with Hot Topics, there is a banner um, that uh, Bruce has been working on bringing to the church. And um, it says, voting is our sacred duty. So let us keep that in mind, especially in this season um, when justice and democracy um, are so vulnerable in our country. So let us begin our worship with our acknowledgement. Our acknowledgement. As a faith congregation, we acknowledge that this is a pivotal moment in American history and that our mission is clearly laid out in the gospel of Jesus. We acknowledge our mission to seek justice for black and brown people of all genders and orientations, dismantle systems of bias and racism, call out those who protect the power of state-sponsored violence against black and brown bodies, and recenter the voices of the marginalized of our community and society. We also acknowledge our part perpetuating white norms of language, style, worship, behavior, and culture. And with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we acknowledge the truth that black lives matter. We also acknowledge that this service of worship is being held on the traditional lands of the Lenai Lenape people, and we pay respect to elders past and present. We affirm the sacredness of Native people, their languages, their cultures, and their gifts to the church and the world.
Now let us participate in the call to worship. In the midst of the desert heat, God heard the cries of the people. Help us, Lord. Please help us. Manna was given, and water gushed forth from a rock. Lord, have mercy upon us. In the midst of the deserts of fear and frustration, God will provide for our needs. Lord, come to us and heal us. Amen. Amen. in prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved 
as to love. For it is in giving that, that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Let us welcome each other. Welcome the stranger. Welcome all who come. As Christ welcomed everyone, no matter what their background, no matter what their social status, as Christ welcomed enemies and friends, outcasts and leaders, foreigners and neighbors, let us open our hearts and homes and lives. Let us be Christ to everyone we meet. Peace be with you. And also with you. And we'll break into our um, breakout rooms and share uh, our peace with one another. Good morning, Bonnie. Hi, Gabe. How are you? Very well, and you today? Doing all right, I like your background. I'm at the link. <laughs> That's nice. Was that was that, the, was that taken recently or well, obviously not recently? Last year? I don't know. Uh, I got oh, it off of their website. But that's oh, where I want to be today. I live virtually, <laughs> so I would like to be at the link. All right. Hi, Bill. Hi. It's good to see you. This Hello, Bill. Good morning, nice Hall. to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Shirley. Fine. Fine Peace to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Peace to you as well. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's the Eagles idea to have these breakout rooms. It gives us a chance to talk to people we don't see often. often. Isn't that the truth? I don't see anybody. I'm pretty much quarantined. Yeah, yeah, you're not alone. <laughs> no, I don't go anywhere. I do. I would. I feel safest not going anywhere. Well, that's correct. That's good. So, so what do you do? don't want me to go anywhere. <laughs> All right. right. I live in different countries and other parts of this nation. And I, every night or every morning, they, may, they, they remind me to wash my hands and don't go anywhere. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I think that's the way we're safest. Right. Yeah. I don't tell them when I uh, sneak over to the pharmacy or the grocery store. <laughs> I was going to say, do you, do you get your groceries delivered or do you usually go get them? Delivered? I have all my pharmaceuticals delivered and I have a friend who gets my groceries for me. Oh, okay. I go out for that, Gabe. I did have them delivered, but um, I didn't think it would last this long. Yeah. I didn't want to prevail on them any longer. So I, I do go out for groceries every couple of weeks. Uh -huh. And I make all my all my doctor's appointments. <laughs> Got my flu shots this week. Oh, that's that's going to be very important. We're told. That's true. That's true. Flu shots. Yeah. I guess it's 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 that season, right? That season's here now. Yeah. The season is here and and is now. Uh, I haven't gotten it in the past, but I'm going to this year. I think it's it's well worth it. Yes. It'll just stick you for a short period. <laughs> It'll stick you for it. <laughs> right. yeah, I'm the same way. I haven't gotten the flu shot no. ever, I think. <laughs> I, I got one once. Yeah. yeah. I think it would have been okay, but I don't know now. With yeah. yeah, this COVID. is different. Yeah. All new rules now. That's true. I don't know how long this is going to last, but... Uh, it's something that I never anticipated. None of us did, I'm sure. No. Look at an empty link. That's going to be unbelievable. That's true. That's true. Oh, that's today, right? They're, they're home. Yeah. Yeah. One o'clock. No tailgaters. No. Plenty of fans, but not there. But not there. Not there. <laughs> nice to see both of you. Yeah, thank you, and I'm pleased to see you. Good to see both of you as well. Take care. Okay. Bye -bye. Uh, let's see. I'm going to mute myself.
All right, thank you. You bet, Alex. Yeah, I need to close this off. Yeah. Hey, Alex. You're welcome. So, Jody, I still need those Zoom lessons. We'll do it. Okay. I mean, actually, I and two scout leaders. If if there's a way we could meet and separate and have the big screen so we don't be looking over each other's shoulder at a screen, that would be lovely. If you don't mind, we'll even compensate you if we, if you know, the scouts will figure out something. But we 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 got to learn how to use it because we don't know. I'm happy to help. Thank you. Really, what I miss. <laughs> What you miss? Yeah. Talk, talk, anyway. talk, talk. All That's right, right. we got to be all back. Uh, yeah. My other group is back. Today's contemporary reading is by Maya Angelou. She has to say, I have learned that no matter what happens or how bad it seems today, life goes on and will be better tomorrow. I have learned that you can tell a lot about a person by the way he or she handles three things. A rainy day, lost luggage, and tangled Christmas lights. I have learned that regardless of your relationship with your parents, you will miss them when they are gone from your life. I have learned that making a living is not the same as making a life. I have learned that life sometimes gives you a second chance. I have learned that you should not go through life with a catcher's mitt on both hands. You need to be able to throw something back. I have learned that whenever I decide something with an open heart, I usually make the right decision. I have learned that even when I have pains, I do not have to be one. I have learned that every day you should reach out and touch someone. People love a warm hug or just a friendly pat on the back. I have learned that I still have a lot to learn. I have learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did but people will never forget how you made them feel.
Buenos dias. Good morning. Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Exodus, the 16th chapter. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. And that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to the, all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is a bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I was a brat when I was younger. But some of my closest friends might disagree. I try not to be one anymore. I was a brat specifically when it came to food. Once I had tasted tacos, cheesesteaks, pizza, french fries, burgers, and other junk food for the first time, most other foods just didn't quite hit the same way. And so the typical day-to-day -day foods provided to me by my loving mother sometimes didn't suffice. Now don't get me wrong, my mom is an incredible cook and I love the food she makes. But after laborious days of cleaning houses, she would come home extremely tired and would sometimes cook something easy and fast. Or on certain days, she wouldn't come home until late in the evening. Being the loving mother that she is, she anticipated this and she would leave us with what was her and my dad's typical food as children in Guatemala, frijoles and tortillas, black beans and tortillas. My reaction to this as a child was, how dare she? How dare she just leave us something so plain like black beans and tortillas? Thankfully, my parents were patient with me. They constantly referred me back to their upbringing in Guatemala and how black beans and tortillas were a daily source of nutrition for them. 
It was in many ways their daily bread. Of course, as a kid, I didn't want to hear any of this. So what I would do sometimes would be to scramble and gather all the quarters and dollar bills that I could find in the house and go to the corner store and get a hoagie or some soda and chips to fill me up. I know it was terrible. In the end, those processed foods were much more harmful to me than the sacredness I now have for black beans and tortillas. But I was a grumbler, a complainer. In many ways, I still am. And in today's passage, the Israelites are in a similar yet different predicament. They have left everything they once knew. They were enslaved in Egypt for hundreds of years, and God delivered them. However, they find themselves now in the wilderness, under an unforgiving desert heat, tired, weary, and most importantly, hungry. And as we know, in order for anything to live, it requires energy. We as human beings get our energy through food. The Israelites had no food. So they complain. They complain to their leaders. Why bring us out here? Why deliver us from slavery if we're just going to die of hunger in the middle of nowhere? When I first read this passage a long time ago, I was filled with judgment. How could the Israelites complain, I thought? How could they grumble against the God who had just delivered them? I now realize that in these thoughts, I had lost my humanity. Because is it even possible to be human and not to complain or grumble at some point in life? I would be a hypocrite to read this passage without empathy and, or compassion toward the Israelites. Sure, had the Israelites seen the miracles of God throughout their lives? Absolutely. They saw plagues torment the Egyptians in hopes of persuading a stubborn Pharaoh to let God's people go. They saw the parting of the Red Sea. They saw how a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire guided them through the wilderness on their route to the promised land. Yet none of that matters here. They are hungry and they are desperate. This spoke to me radically this weekend. I have felt overwhelmed, and the weight of the spirit these past couple of months has been too much for me to carry. The heaviness of this world seems too overbearing. What's happening in this country with countless deaths due to racism, irresponsibility in the middle of a pandemic, political turmoil, and fear-mongering that causes more and more division every day. This, all of this, on top, on top of deep personal loss and grief, has left me feeling defeated. I find that I resonate with the Israelites. I resonate with their despair, their frustration, their pain. Why, God? Why do I have to suffer? Why do we? have to suffer. Someone in the Bible study this past Wednesday very wisely called it the wilderness of the heart. I wonder how many of us have experienced the wilderness of the heart, a place where we are surrounded by deep discomfort, darkness, and insecurity. It's okay to complain. It's okay to grumble. It's okay to be angry, frustrated, sad. A wise rabbi in seminary once said to me, it's okay to be angry at God because God can take it. God can take it. In this case, God heard the people complaining because God is the God who hears. This is one of my favorite ways of imaging God, as one who hears and sees. And how does God respond to the outcry of the Israelites? God responds through provision. 
God saw that the Israelites were hungry and God heard their complaints and God provided food. But I always find this part interesting because God doesn't provide a four course meal with your selection of filet mignon, lemon garlic salmon, or homemade penne alla vodka. No. Instead, God provides flaky, thin bread. The Israelites are confused. To them, it's not even bread. What is it, they ask? Moses replies and says, it is bread that the Lord has given you to eat. What a metaphor for life. I know that in the midst of the wilderness that I'm currently navigating, I've asked God for many things. I've asked God for peace, shalom, tranquility. I've asked God for fresh beginnings, a second chance to begin again. I've asked God for healing. And God has replied to me in ways that have caused me to ask, what is this? This question to me that the Israelites ask is a reminder that God may not always give us what we want, but God will always be there to provide what it is we need. Like the Israelites, there are many in the world who are going through the wilderness. Some people are literally going through the wilderness, like in the case of many migrants who traverse deserts, rivers, and other harsh terrains in hopes for a better life. May God be with them on their journeys, and may they safely arrive at their destinations. Then there are others who are going through the wilderness of the heart. The fact of the matter is that suffering is all around us. As I mentioned in previous sermons, many of our closest friends and relatives are suffering, whether it be physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual. And I wanna be very sensitive to this. I would never seek to glorify suffering. However, I do acknowledge that to suffer is to be human. Look no further than the God human Jesus who suffered greatly. He suffered physically when he was hungry in the wilderness. He suffered emotionally when his dear friend Lazarus died. He suffered spiritually when he felt abandoned by his loved ones on his way to his execution. Yet the good news wouldn't be good news without hope. It's as a brilliant Cornell West once said, I cannot be an optimist, but I am a prisoner of hope. To suffer is to be human, but to hope is also to be human. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. And with that in mind, I'd like to end this sermon with a meditation. And so if you would, wherever it is you are, please close your eyes at this moment. Close your eyes and shift all of your attention to your breath. As you breathe in, feel your lungs filling with this ruach, this breath, this wind, this spirit. Slowly exhale. Pay attention to what it is you're feeling at this moment. Whether it's joy or sadness, gratitude or grumbling, God hears you and God sees you.
and all of your humanity. Remember that you are a child of God, made in God's image and likeness. And so as you breathe in, receive God's mercies this morning. Receive God's manna, this mysterious bread that is nutritious. And finally, receive God's love. And remember that God walks with you God walks with us through the wilderness. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us remember these in our prayers. Reverend James McIntyre, Bernice Mitchell, Beth Alcomo and her son Chris, David Pearson, Dick Link, Gabriela Areces, George Harold, Joy Wilcox, Karen Clark, Kimberly Chambers, Linda Brown, Lorraine Emmerich. Lorraine Henson, Phyllis Minter, Ray Spean, family and friends of Renee Marie Thompson Hall, Susan Mitchell Goucher, family and friends of Tanya Owens.
Good morning, Fumcod family, and greetings from Southern California. Wow. It's, cur it's currently sunny here, but following massive wildfires, we've experienced many days of gray skies with an orange sun breaking through periodically and ashes falling like snow. I have a few things on my mind and prayer provides the space and energy to work through one's thoughts. So please join me in the gathered prayer. Mother, Father, God, thank you for this day and the opportunity to be with one another in worship. As we hold each other in our hearts, we give strength and hope to those in need, especially those with significant physical, emotional, and family health concerns. Spending time together in this sacred place helps us to center ourselves in preparation for experiences and challenges we may encounter in the upcoming week. We're also grateful for the ministerial staff, teachers, and volunteers for their commitment to the life of FUMCOD. We pray for those who have lost loved ones to the COVID virus and for those who have lost jobs, homes, and food security. We see the results of global, global warming in the millions of acres of forests and native animals lost to fire, the burned out dwellings of those who called the forest home, fierce hurricanes and floods, and increasing famine worldwide. Help us to become more active custodians of our planet, to restore its health and improve the lives of our descendants who will live with the results of our actions or inaction. We must take these tasks on as our own, as we live in a time characterized by chaos, division, and discontent in our country. We look to you, God, as our source of inspiration, hope, and energy to build bridges across current divides. God, we are so grateful for the life and leadership by example of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She took on prejudices against women in the law profession to teach law at well-regarded universities and become a champion of women's rights. After joining the Supreme Court of the US as one of its most liberal judges, some questioned her longtime friendship with Justice Antonin Scalia, her ideological opposite. To me, this is another example of her strength of character and her ability to build bridges with others. Lord, help us to follow Ruth Bader Ginsburg's example by developing our own us-them mentality, we fail to honor the humanity of those with whom we agree, disagree. As another woman's rights advocate, Carmen Perez, executive director of Gathering for Justice and co-chair of the 2017 Women's March on Washington, counseled activists, everyone has a lane. Find your lane and build a bridge. With your help, Mother, Father, God, we will. Let the words and actions of St. Francis and Maya Angelou be our guide. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Mother, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the Lord's Prayer, we just prayed for God to give us this day our daily bread. When we share our bread daily with others, others are fed. As we have received, so now we give. We give in the vineyard of the Lord our tithes and our offerings. Let us pray. God of abundance, receive these gifts with thanks from your people, we pray. May they and we help your love and grace flow like rivers in deserts of need. Amen.
Friends, go forth into the world as God's children. As we navigate wilderness, remember that you are not alone, that God walks with you. Let the love of God be reflected in your life and in your deeds. Go with peace and joy. Amen. church today. Ah. Well, that helps a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I needed that today. Woo. Thank you. Everybody. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Beautiful service. Yes. Amazing. Very much, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. enjoyed the bells. Oh, the bells. Yes. Were beautiful. The bells were wonderful. Yeah. Nice to see you, Bill. Hey, Gloria. Hi, hi, everyone. It's so nice you to are. see you. Oh. I miss seeing the back of your head in front of me. In the front of you in front of me. <laughs> I was so pleased to see you today. I was oh, really very warmed nice. my heart. Oh, well, I'm glad. Yeah, thank you, Ben, for your prayer. It warms my heart to see all these people that I feel so close to. Yeah. Now, I look at, at Lyle. And I think, oh my goodness, it's my turn to be usher. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Gabe. I want to say to Gabe that may you have enough love, joy, and blessings to see you through your struggles of the times. Yes. Oh, Thank you. It, it's, it sounds terrible, but we are very lucky. The closest fire is about 10 miles away, mm -hmm. um, but has not come this near us. I mean, we, we can go outside every day and see smoke and flames along the San Gabriel Mountains, but we've been very lucky that they have moved down to our area. Where are you? Um, I, I, we live in the San Gabriel Valley, just 
east of the sun. Are they containing the fire well, then? Um, some have been contained. The, the one they were most concerned about um, earlier in the week was what's called the Bobcat Fire. Mm -hmm. um, was, um, it, it was uh, getting very close to two of the major um, suburbs of Pasadena. Um, and also it is the, the setting for a very large um, national observatory. So the okay. firemen have been working to yes. keep the flames from hitting the observatory. Um, it seems to be going better, but you know, one, one fire gets under control and another one pops up. Right. Right. One of which was started by some gender reveal party. I can't believe, why, why is that a thing? Uh, Even the lady who sort of first popularized it is like, yeah, yeah. She regrets it now. She just had a cake. She just had yeah. a cake. She just had a cake. Yeah. <laughs> she just had a cake. Yeah. I've never been a fan of those. I've heard of too many times you where know. people, mother is disappointed at, <laughs> at the gender. Um, but people have been injured in those things. Somebody died at one of them. Oh, mom. Oh, my it seems why very, is that a thing somehow yeah why why is it why well and and you know so so you're having a boy slash girl and they're going to identify however they're going to identify so <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you should have a gender reveal party when they're 17. right that's a very good point very good point Tell everyone to contact you instead of having the party. <laughs> yeah. you'll, you'll set them right. Yeah. Hey, Charlene. I don't think we've seen Charlene recently. Oh, Charlene's been there. We can okay. hear you, Bill. Yes. Kind of quiet. <laughs> I'm not sure she has a microphone. No. She's very she attentive. Has, she has a, I think she's hey, doing Charlene. it. On her telephone. Oh, no. No. Bye, everybody. Sabelle, I look forward to the day when we can have lunch again. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We do too. Yes, I agree. Thank you, Dolores. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have a question for Julie. Is Julie <laughs> here? I'm here. Are cool. Are you unmuted? Hi, Julie. Um, Are you going to be there for a while? I'm sorry? Bob Coom. You go oh. for a while. Okay. What? I'm going to be in the office for a while. Hi. I noticed. <laughs> no, are you going to be in the office for a while? And thank you, Yancey, for your good work and, and yes, organizing. Good. It's really, uh, you can see a difference there. We're happy I to have, have the you. sign. Right. <laughs> I'll be here for the conversations on race group. OK. Oh. Oh, is that a separate uh, sign-in? Yes. So what do I do? Just go to my email? There. Or just stay look, here? Look for an email from Lynn. I mean from... No, Lisa. Right, Lisa. okay. Here's the student. Yeah. Yes. It's different. Julie, I have a question. Um, do it's you tough. still have the, the um, posters and that you are selling at He's in California um, now. um i'm not sure there may have been a couple of extra ones due to some sort of miscount <laughs> on my part i haven't been to the office to check okay um, yeah. if yeah, you I think i saw you, some there excuse what, me I, I think i saw some there when i was there the other day yes what did you want to say lynn Oh, if you have one, I would like to purchase it and um, get it to Maria. Okay. Maria, would, um, I, I can get somebody to take it to her or she could pick it up. Okay, I will check and then I will email you. Okay. If you don't hear from me, remind me. <laughs> oh, okay, I will. Where, where does Maria live? She lives in Antler. September 20th. 
That's not so, from us, so. I, I, I'd be glad to drive it to her. Mm -hmm. We could do that. There's just, the, the signs are here. Oh, wonderful. Her email. Okay. You need my email? Question on conversations on race. Don't we stay on the same, on no. the same? No. no. Well, we, we have to find which of many emails that Lisa sent has to do no. with what we you want. Look, look at the last one or two. She sent one today as a reminder. It might be okay. in there. I don't know. Well, I have one from September 18th is the last one I have. Well, there's one called FUMCOG Office that has all the things we're considering and at the oh, bottom my email. Maybe it was Barbara's. So I'll say in a little bit. Uh, all right, I don't see it. But I'm going to go get food if, if you want. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank Thank you. you. <laughs> Gabe, keep, keep the faith and eat chocolate. That's yes, all I got. Yes, there you go. Bye. 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 Bye